Hi now. While it certainly is a challenge to find the best tools that are worthy of your hard-earned money, it isn't impossible, especially when you have a reliable source like our channel to point you in the direction of the brands you can trust. In preparing this list, we reviewed literally dozens of products and we based our ranking on a number of factors, including the features of the product, value for the money, and the reputation of the manufacturer. We even read countless reviews from actual users. If you choose from this list, you can be sure that you'll buy one of the best tools available today. So make sure to check the product links below in the description and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started. With Lincoln Electric, get the right tool for the job every time. The handy MIG welder's portable design and compatibility with household outlets give you the flexibility to weld virtually anywhere, making it exceptionally useful for around-the-house DIY jobs. With four output ranges, it has the versatility for home repair and hobby projects on mild-gauge steel found around the house, from 24-gauge to 1 8 of an inch thick. We've even thrown in a handy reference guide to help you match the power output to the metal you're working on. So even if you're new to welding or just need a cheat sheet, you're always ready to go. This baby's fan cooled for a long life of welding by your side. And it's built to handle both MIG and gasless flux cord jobs. Right out of the box, you'll find just about everything you need to get welding. This kit includes a welding gun with a cold contactor safety feature that keeps the wire electrically cold until you pull the trigger. Other accessories include sample wire spools, a flux cord nozzle, a MIG nozzle and regulator, a chipping hammer and brush, and a hand shield for face protection. For the best in versatility for your at-home welding projects and repairs, trust the Handy MIG. Hi, I'm Shane with Hobart Welding Products. Today we're going to take a look at the Hobart Handler 140. This is a 115 volt, 140 amp wire feed welder. Features a 10 foot MIG gun. Also comes with a heavy duty ground clamp and 10 foot cable. This unit comes with a roll of flux core wire so you can weld right out of the box. Or it also includes the regulator and gas hose so you can switch over to MIG if you desire. Taking a look inside the Handler 140, you'll notice the welding setup chart that makes setting your machine up properly very easy. And if we look at the industrial grade cast aluminum drive system with quick release, that also makes changeovers very quick. It also has the polarity um, with easy access so you can change from flux core to MIG uh, very easily also. This machine, we have the small a uh, two pound roll on, but you can also run the eight inch spool and it also comes with this adapter. Taking a look at the front of the Handler 140, you'll notice the slope control panel for easy visibility. Also features infinite control on your wire feed speed and five tap settings allowing you to go down to 24 gauge steel and up to quarter inch steel. This machine also features a thermal overload protection light in case this machine gets too hot, it will shut down and save the machine from any damage. You will experience excellent arc performance from the Handler 140 with a smooth, stable arc on all thicknesses. Designed and assembled in Troy, Ohio, USA and backed by a 531 industrial warranty to protect your investment. For more product information, visit our website, HobartWelders.com.
Welcome to another edition of the Everlast Power video series. In this edition, we are going to take another look at the Power MTS 250S, a MIG, TIG, and stick welder from Everlast. It's the latest addition to the Everlast multi-process line. Today, we will demonstrate the setup and connection of the welder and its accessories. The Everlast MTS comes with about everything you need to weld and includes the following 25 series MIG gun, Euro Quick Connect for the MIG gun, 26 TIG torch with torch remote switch, stick torch, foot pedal, a ball type regulator, and a consumable starter kit for MIG and TIG. The welder comes with a NEMA 650 plug already installed. This is the standard welder plug in North America. Notice the three prong design. Now let's get the unit ready to weld. First locate the ball type regulator. The unit includes tubing to connect your welder to the regulator. Take the tubing and install the clamp as shown onto the regulator. Slide the tubing all the way onto the bar fitting and firmly seat it. Now fully tighten the clamp with a screwdriver and check the tubing for a good fit. Next, install the regulator onto the cylinder using your fingers to prevent cross-threading. Then take a wrench to snug the fitting. Be careful not to over-tighten the fitting. Now install the tubing and clamp onto the bar fitting located on the rear of the unit. Again, fully seat the tubing and then tighten the clamp. The Euro Quick Connect fitting makes the MIG gun easy to install. Simply line up the pins, push in, and then tighten the plastic nut with your fingers. Do not use any hand tools to tighten the nut. Now we're ready to install the MIG welding wire. Open the side of the welder to access the spool carrier. Unscrew the hand nut from the spool carrier by turning counterclockwise. Now, adjust the tension on the spool carrier with a socket head wrench. Some resistance is desirable to prevent despooling of the MIG wire. For most MIG operations, make sure the copper bus bar is connected to the positive terminal. Some flux core applications require negative polarity. Before installing the welding wire, make sure the correct drive roll size is selected. Unscrew the thumb screw retaining the lower drive roller. Slide the lower roller off the shaft to identify the correct groove. 0.8 millimeter will work for both 0.030 and 0.035 diameter wires. One millimeter will work for 0.040 and 0.045 diameter wires. Only 80 inch diameter rolls will fit the MTS 250S. For steel, this would be equivalent to a 10 to 12 pound roll of wire. An adapter can be made to fit the 4 inch rolls as well. Install the welding wire with wire rolling off from the bottom. On the spool carrier, there's a locating pin which corresponds to a hole or slot located in the wire spool. Line them up and slide the spool onto the shaft. Check to make sure the spool will roll when turned but does not freewheel. Now, spin the hand nut down onto the spool carrier and hand tighten. Take a small wire cutter and snip the welding wire loose from the side of the spool. While you are doing this, be sure to keep your hand on the back side of the spool to prevent despooling and uncoiling of the wire. Next, make sure the wire tensioner is released and begin to feed the wire into the wire feed assembly. Feed first into the metal pickup tube, then guide it down onto the lower drive roller. Feed it several inches into the brass power connector. Then lower the top drive roller onto the bottom, making sure the wire is still in the groove. Raise the spring loaded tensioner and retighten the tension according to the mount required. Typically, more tension is required for steel and stainless than for aluminum. Turn the welder on and select the MIG process. Then press the trigger on the MIG gun to feed the wire through the gun. Remove the shielding nozzle and the tip if necessary. For MIG and stick processes, the work clamp should always be installed in the negative connector. Line up the tab and groove on the connectors, slide the connector in, twist clockwise about one quarter turn to secure it. 
To weld and stick mode, connect the torch to the positive connector. Again, slide the connector in and twist about a quarter turn clockwise to secure it. To weld in TIG mode, the work clamp should be installed into the positive connector. Next, take the TIG torch and install it into the negative connector. With TIG, the torch will always be installed as electrode negative. Connect the TIG torch gas line to the quick connect mounted above the MIG connection. During MIG welding, do not leave the TIG torch installed. Finally, connect either the torch remote switch or the foot pedal to the 7-pin connector. Tighten the coupling finger tight only. This completes our setup tutorial. If you have any questions, please give us a call at the number listed at the end of the video. We understand you have a job to do. We are here to help you do it right. I'm Jason Mayhew from Forney Industries. I'm the Senior Manager of Welding Product Development and Engineering. I'd like to show you the 140 MIG welding machine and the 190 MIG welding machine. They're very similar machines to each other, so let's take a look at those similarities. They both have an integrated torch wrap system. They both come standard with a regulator uh, and a 10-foot gas hose. They come with a Euro-style disconnect torch. They are uh, multi-stepped transformer based machines. In the case of the 140 machine it has four steps on the transformer and the 190 machine has six steps on the transformer. I want to take a closer look at the Euro style disconnect gun. It's very easy to remove from the machine. If I have some type of wire feeding problem with this machine it's very easy to troubleshoot or if I need to replace the liner I can undo this and easily replace the liner. Very nice and convenient. So let's take a look at the uh, voltage tap settings here. This again has four settings that equates to roughly sixteenths of an inch uh, between the uh, voltage tap settings. So the 140 MIG welding machine will weld anywhere from a sixteenth of an inch up to four sixteenths of an inch, which is a quarter of an inch. If you look over at the 190 machine, it has six tap settings, so that means it'll weld up to three eighths of an uh, inch. Let's take a look on the inside where the similarities continue. As we look inside the MIG welding machines, all of the Forney uh, MIG welding machines uh, share some common characteristics. They all have a very premium wire feeding system. As you know in MIG welding you want a clean, crisp, stable arc and the wire feeding system is key to that. Uh, so let's look at the components of the Forney wire feeding system. You look back here at the, the spooler, uh, it's easy to adjust on the tension. Uh, the wire pays off the despooler, uh, goes through the inlet guide. If you look at the drive and the either roll, uh, they're both geared. Both of those geared rolls working together improve the wire feeding through uh, the MIG gun. And then with that uh, all working together nice and smoothly, you get a smooth, stable arc. Uh, on our machines, it's easy to adjust the polarity, uh, and that's the adjustment right here. Uh, and then you'll notice that we also have a box included uh, for storing your tips, diffusers, nozzles, and things like that. We've been looking at some of the similarities on the 140 and the 190 MIG machines. Let's take a look at some of the differences. Uh, you'll notice on the 140 machine, it operates off of 115 volts for standard household use. It's very nice and convenient. It has an eight foot long power cord. The working envelope, however, can be extended by the use of an extension cord. Uh, I would recommend a 10 gauge, no longer than a 25 foot extension cord if you want to extend the envelope. Okay, Let's look at the 190 machine. It has a higher input voltage so it operates off of 220 or 230 volts. That allows you to have a, a higher maximum output of about 190 amps. It also comes with a longer power cord. It comes with a 15 foot long power cord. These machines are both very good for farm and ranch, uh, automotive uses, or just general repair welding. 
The machines also are covered by the standard 531 Forney warranty. If you have questions about the machines or questions about the warranty, I'd recommend you going to ForneyIND.com or AskForney.com. Hello everyone, this is Scott from Lotus Technology. Today I'd like to introduce you to the Lotus MIG 140, a 140 amp MIG welder used to create industrial results at an affordable price. Its portability and lightweight makes it perfect for the home user. Now I'm going to set it up and then we'll run some test welds.
That's it for today. Thanks for watching.